So I'm sure that you've heard that the eyes are the windows to the soul, right? But in reality, they're more like windows to your health. And I bet you'll be surprised by how the health of different bodily organs all show up through your eyes. So here's my top nine of what your eyes are telling me about your health. So let's take a look. Hey eyes and shine there my friends, Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, helping you learn everything about the eyes and seeing your very best. Now when I first look at somebody's eyes, the first thing I'm usually seeing is just the outside appearance of their eyes. So number one is just somebody having red eyes. If somebody's eyes are red, it's not just meaning that they have an infection like with pink eye or that perhaps they've been smoking something. In fact, red eyes can be caused by many different things, certainly allergies, dry eye conditions, maybe they got poked in the eye or scratched in the eye. But somebody having red eyes is really just an indication that something is unhappy with their eyeball. But for some people, having red eyes could be a sign of something like a uveitis or a scleritis. These are deeper inflammatory issues that are occurring not just within the eye, but are often linked and associated with other things going on in the body. A case of uveitis could be linked to inflammation due to ankylosing spondylitis, an inflammatory condition that affects your spine. Also inflammatory bowel disease, including Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Then you also have psoriatic arthritis where people who have psoriasis on their skin, somehow that inflammation affects the eyes. And then also sarcoidosis and many other inflammatory diseases. Again, it just baffles me and I think it's super interesting how just different parts of the body just if there's an inflammation in your gut, it can cause inflammation in your eye. I think it just goes to show you how crazy complex and beautiful the human body really is. The second thing the eyes can tell you is if somebody has jaundice. This is probably the most famous sort of eye condition that I think people will just recognize in other YouTube videos is if your eyes are turning yellow or your skin is yellow, this can be a sign of jaundice. Jaundice is a condition where too much bilirubin is building up within your body and is often a sign that something is not going right with your liver. So unfortunately, if you see somebody with yellow eyes, there could be something going on with their liver, anything from infections to medications, could be gallstones or even cancer. Thankfully, however, jaundice is pretty rare, so I personally haven't even had to run across it yet. Number three on this list is that of a white or yellowish ring that grows on the outside of the colored part of your eye. And if you ever run up to a mirror or look into a friend's eyes, you might be able to see this little white or yellow ring starting to form on the outside there. And that is in fact a deposit of lipid or fat that is depositing in the cornea stroma. So in fact, it's not actually depositing in the colored part of the eye, it's in the cornea, the front window to the eye. And we call this development corneal arcus. And if we happen to notice it, in somebody who's younger, like under the age of 40, it could be an indication of dyslipidemia or elevated cholesterol levels. However, if you ever go up to somebody who's a bit older, like if you walk up to your grandparents, if you're comfortable getting that close, you might be able to notice that they do have this white ring growing there. This is pretty common in anybody that's over the age of 60, and we call that arcus senilis. And this is believed to occur more often as you get older because your blood vessels are more permeable to lipid deposits as you get older. But still, if I see this in a young individual, I'm worried that they have elevated cholesterol levels or something's wrong with their lipids and they could be at increased risk of heart attack, stroke, or some other cardiovascular event. And number four on my list here is that of having redness under your eyelids. If you ask a friend just to look for you, it's pretty hard to do it in the mirror, but if you look down toward the floor and lift up your upper eyelid, if the white part of your eye there is more red, like a big red patch, that could be an indication of what is called SLK or superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis. And this condition, this SLK, is highly associated with thyroid disease. And that's because in the cases of thyroid eye disease, the eye muscles around the eye become swollen and that pushes the eyes outward, kind of creating this bulging eye look. And then the eyelid, the top eyelid especially, has a little bit more friction on the top of the eye and then that rubs and causes more inflammation. Now, if someone happens to be a contact lens wearer, perhaps that redness could be from the contacts not sitting right, but still, uh, whenever we see that in the eye clinic, we usually have to go test for uh, any that somebody may have problems with their thyroid. Number five is the presence of a pinguecula. If you ever look in the mirror or take a picture and you notice a little tiny raised bump or growth at three or nine o'clock on both of your eyes, However, they do tend to show up more often toward the nose. Those little raised bumps, which could look white, yellow, 
pink or even red if it's inflamed, we call that a pinguecula. And he's usually assigned to me that this person has sun damage. Basically, uh, through the course of your life, if you're exposed to a lot of UV light radiation, especially from the sun, or if you're around a lot of lakes or bodies of water, that sunlight bounces off the water, hits you in the face twice. Thankfully, wearing wide brim hats and UV light protecting sunglasses can slow down the progression of this disease and prevent it from occurring in the first place. Unfortunately, if you already have a pinguecula, sunglasses and hats aren't gonna reverse what you already have, but it'll at least slow down and hopefully prevent it from becoming inflamed or worse. Now, number six is that of pupil size. And there can be a lot to be said about pupil size here, but this is genuinely something that I do look for when I meet new people, and certainly any time a patient comes into the clinic. Just in general, your pupils are regulated by your autonomic nervous system as well as uh, influenced by medications. But if you ever see somebody with blown wide open pupils, that's usually a sign that they are excited or really scared, such as in the situation where like you're running away from a bear or maybe a burglar broke into your apartment or your home, your pupils are gonna dilate really big to let more information into your eye so that you can detect motion better and be able to react faster in those situations because that's going to increase your chances of survival in that scary situation. And then just the opposite, if you're really relaxed in a digestive mood, you're just kind of chilling out, your pupils are likely going to get much, much smaller. So when somebody comes into my clinic and they happen to be on some sort of medication or maybe using illicit drugs, then just by looking at their pupils, I can get an idea what they might be taking. For example, if they had used an illicit drug like cocaine, that is a, an extreme stimulant, your body is gonna be really excited, your pupils are humongous and large. Or on the flip side, if somebody's using something like morphine, a very powerful pain reliever, then uh, their pupils are gonna be very, very beady, 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 tiny, or the fancy word we use in the clinic as meiotic, like little teeny pinpoint pupils. But just some interesting fun facts is that normally young kids do have larger pupils and then your pupils get smaller and smaller as you get older. So if you go up to your grandparents, you may notice that their pupils are really tiny. And uh, in fact, we have to use extra amounts of dilation medication in the clinic to get their, their eyes open. And the other cool fact is that your pupils will respond and dilate when you see something that you really like. Like if you're meeting somebody that you're attracted to, or perhaps you have a really good hand in a game of poker. In fact, that's why a lot of poker players will wear sunglasses over their eyes so that you can't see where they're looking as well as you can't see their pupils dilate when they have a good hand. Now, the times when I am mostly concerned about somebody's pupils is when one pupil is a different size on one versus the other. When somebody has different sized pupils, we call that having anisocoria. Anisocoria has many causes, but it can be a sign of some very serious medical emergencies. That's exactly why you'll see doctors on both TV shows and in real life flash a flashlight between each eye going back and forth, something that we call the swinging flashlight test. And they're specifically looking to see how your pupils react to light in different situations. If one pupil isn't really reacting to light the correct way, it could be a sign that somebody has an aneurysm or a stroke of some kind. But before you go into the mirror, look and you know freak out because you notice that one pupil is slightly larger, keep in mind about 20% of the general population does have physiological anisocoria, where just one pupil is slightly like one millimeter larger in diameter in all lighting situations than the other pupil. Medicine doesn't fully understand why some people have this and even why it can sometimes switch sides, but it's believed to be caused by some sort of transient asymmetry in the neurological connections and feedback between your brain and the eye. But still, if you see somebody with one pupil really large and the other one's really small, that might be a telltale sign something's going on. Unless you're David Bowie, and you notice that he has two different sized pupils. Uh, I've read once that that was caused by trauma when he got into a fight or something on the playground when he was a kid. But definitely let me know in the comment section if you or if you know somebody who has different sized pupils because of trauma or some medical condition. It's, it's kind of interesting. Number seven is that of having recurrent eyelid styes. Now, having a sty on your eyelid, if you've never had one before, uh, there's two different forms. One is an infection where it's really painful, kind of red, almost looks like a pim pimple developing on the outside of the eye. Uh, the other one is called a chalazy. And a chalazion is more like a hard nodule on your eyelid, and those are more of a buildup or blocked up of the oil fluid inside the eyelid. And it's pretty normal to get either one of these a few times in your life. Uh, some people do tend to get them more often. But if somebody is developing recurrent forms of these chalazions over and over and over in the exact same spot on their eyelid, then your doctor, like myself, 
I have to be concerned that perhaps that's not a Chalazion. Instead, that could be a sign of a sebaceous carcinoma. Now, I know there are people who do get recurrent styes all the time. If you're hearing this and you're kind of freaking out, uh, definitely don't take my word for it. Go see your doctor, ask them, uh, get their opinion on if there's anything you can do to re reduce the styes. Uh, and of course, for them to just to consider if perhaps it is something like sebaceous cell carcinoma. Number eight on my list is that of pain with eye movements. Now, if you just look to the far left, look to your far right, uh, and hold it there, you'll probably notice a little bit of tension or pain kind of building up behind your eye. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is somebody who can just barely shift their eyes around and they're like in throbbing pain around their eye. And usually this pain with eye movement doesn't come alone. Usually someone also has reduced vision, maybe double vision, even reduced color vision in that one eye. Like if they compare back and forth, they'll notice color vision's a little desaturated in one eye. But in the eye care world, if somebody does have pain with eye movement, initially we always are concerned about something called retrobulbar optic neuritis, or really just optic neuritis in a general sense. Optic neuritis is inflammation of the optic nerve behind the eye. And if you can imagine this occurs because the optic nerve has a little bit of give to it on the back of the eye. So when your eyes shift left and right, the optic nerve actually kind of shifts and jumps around a little bit inside the optical cavity. And if that optic nerve is swollen, then you're gonna feel that and you feel that as pain. In the cases where people have this, we do order a brain MRI because usually the eyeball looks normal in about two thirds of cases. But with an MRI, we usually are looking specifically for any sort of white matter lesions that are indicative of something like MS or multiple sclerosis. And optic neuritis happens to be like the presenting feature in up to like 20% of MS cases and almost 50% of everybody who gets MS will at some point have optic neuritis. So yeah, recognizing pain with eye movement is pretty important. Number nine is that of somebody having a white cornea. And in fact, this is something that kind of frustrates me on a deeper level because of YouTube. I see a lot of just kind of sketchy videos that get posted, usually not by somebody in the healthcare field, but they always have a thumbnail that has like an eyeball that has like a completely white cornea or washed out cornea. And then they have another picture of like a normal eye and it's some sort of terrible thing. It's like reverse your glaucoma and cataracts, 100% proven. That white cornea is neither a cataract nor glaucoma. Yes, it's true. If somebody does have a mature cataract, it can form kind of a white marble, but that's deeper inside the eye. That'll be where the black pupil is of the eye. It won't be the entire cornea. But if you do see somebody that does have a white cornea on the front surface of the eye, that's usually due to scarring of some form, either because they had a massive ulcer from an infection, like wearing their contact lenses, or from like a bad surgery or something. Or perhaps they had trauma when they were a kid. Something not nice happened to that eye. Now, of course, in that situation, if somebody did have trauma to the eye, uh, that can cause scarring on the surface, and then a cataract due to trauma can occur, but the white entire cornea being white, that's not caused by cataracts or glaucoma or other things. So yeah, usually if I see thumbnails like that, uh, I kind of laugh a little bit, and I just uh, can usually kind of guess that they don't know what they're talking about. All right, so which one of the eye conditions mentioned in this video was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. I try to get back to as many people as I can. I know the channel's grown quite a bit, but I do take your questions and uh, all your comments very seriously. Now, of course, there are many different systemic diseases that show up in the eye that we did not list in this video. I tried to make it toward just like things on the front surface, like things you can just look at somebody and kind of tell what's going on. But a lot of diseases we can see just by looking inside the eye, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, maybe anemia, stroke and autoimmune diseases, a lot of other things are going on inside the eye. And sadly, a lot of times the eyesight or vision is not affected by a lot of those conditions until it's too late. So if you have not had an eye exam in the last 12 months, I strongly encourage you to reach out to a local eye care professional and schedule an exam. Again, even if you think your vision is fantastic, it's good just to have things checked out to make sure things are staying healthy. If you did find value in this video, please hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new and want to continue learning about cool stuff about the eye. Otherwise, I appreciate you for sticking around to the end. Keep an eye on it, and we'll see you in the next one.